I'm saying to the folks at home that Mike Douglas was a talk show host, someone in the vein of Merv Griffin. Uh, he was a, a singer. Call me when you're through, because I forgot <laughs> what I was what talking was about. Okay. And he had a talk his show. His co-host this week was and Sly, every week he had a co -host. Of oh, Sly and the Family Stone. Sure. And he was stoned out of his bird. <laughs> Probably so they opened like the show, and he says, Sly, he says, I understand you're getting married. And so I said, we're going to play two and gave me on Sunday, and then Monday we're going over to Cleveland, and then we're going to come back. He said, no, no, aren't you getting married? I don't know if the horns are going to be there for this engagement, but uh, hopefully we'll be all right, and we'll play and, and get it done. And Mike goes like this, boop. So let's go to commercial. Now, as Sly is sitting here, he brings out Peter Marshall. Yeah. From Hollywood Squares. Right. Peter sits right here. Because the idea of the show is oh, to don't, mix. Oh, don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> and he says, uh, he says, Peter, who's a great guy, by the way. Peter, he says, um, Your son plays you're, baseball. Taking, you're taking Hollywood Squares to Vegas. You're taking him to the road. Yeah. He says, yeah. He said, are you going to change it? He says, no. He says, when it comes to Hollywood Squares, you, you got to call a spade a spade. Oh. And Sly turns to Peter Marshall on this show and said, I'm going to get you. <laughs> They go to commercial, they come back, and Sly is still staring at Peter. And he, Mike Douglas now says, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to bring out the smallest man in the world, Ringling Brothers' own Mishu the Midget. And this guy comes out, and he is the smallest man in the world. Mike picks him up, puts him in the thing, his shoes are like this, that's what you see. And, and so what you see on camera now is Sly still staring at Peter. Yeah. And him talking to Mishu. And he says, Mishu, how old were you when you joined the circus? And Mishu said, Broy. He said, what? Bring it. No, it, when did you first join? He said, Kran. He said, do you speak English? He said, Bring. He said, oh my God, let's go to commercial. They come back, they bring out his interpreter who is wall-eyed. And that's what you had for the last part of the show. Sly staring at Peter and a wall-eyed interpreter with a midget who didn't speak English. And then another time, first show, okay? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox. And we had this giant tenement that turned into R-E-D-D -D and he came out from that. You know a tenement? Music, is? music. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a, a, na oh. like a neighborhood, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I would rather do a show with right. a, I would rather do, I'd rather do a story. show. I'd rather do a show with a signer. I'm serious for the death. No, I'm in the middle of your oh, story. Yeah, you told me let's take a break. I'll show you a break. So there's no red. The audience is applauding. Music's playing. I stop tape. I go to his dressing room. I'm knocking the door. I hear what? I open the door. There, red is sitting in his makeup chair. The girl who's doing his hair is sitting on top of him. So her dress is over his legs. And I said, red. And from under her dress, he said, what? <laughs> I said, we're on camera. He said, can't a man relax? <laughs> Norm told me to come up with some questions for you. And, the, and I've just been dying to know, how, where do you get your ideas from? Well, mind. this Lindsay Lohan can't swim a stroke, but she sure knows every dive in town. That one I like. <laughs> he played Gerard on everybody. Was it Gerard? On, you had a French name? <laughs> I, I saw the show. He played Gerard on Everybody Loves Raymond and has been in very funny movies like Gold Member. I had one line, yeah. The Wayans Brothers' Little Man. From the, the people, it was advertised from the people who brought you white chicks. <laughs> that was the thing on the marquee. And it's, and then the Little Man, then when they did the next one, they didn't mention Little Man in the next Wayne Brothers movie. What about the time, this was what I heard, <laughs> because I was on uh, uh, Byron Allen's Comics Unleashed. And they say, go crazy. They go crazy. And the comics could... No, you could not have been more leashed. Yeah, exactly. Like you had to submit your jokes to six different <laughs> levels before. They, but then he had no uh, ability to segue. 
So it's like, Robert Schimmel, what's going on with you? He's like, what's going on with me? I'm fucking my own niece and my, my fucking, I'm dying of brain cancer and all this. Stuff. And then he goes, oh man, Norm, I understand you have a dog. And so uh, <laughs> none of it would segue. But the funniest question is, he's, he said to John Lovitz, this was his question. He goes, he's reading off a card, he goes, now John, I understand you're growing older. Uh, fish tortured, mutilated, and murdered the youngsters they were children, with a meat cleaver, a butcher knife, and a small handsaw. Oh, Jesus. God, you... This is the topical portion? Of yeah. This is the birthday. Thing. And then he solidified his reputation as the most vicious child slayer in criminal history. Oh, Though you know barely was... literate, Fish wrote taunting letters to the parents of his victims, gruesomely detailing Jesus. how he slayed, butchered, cooked, and then with great enjoyment dined on their offspring. He would inevitably declare that a child's roasted rump was the most toothsome dish in all of gastronomy. Gastronomy. Additionally, I, fish was a, a masochist, get this, and he would insert wool doused with lighter fluid into his own anus and set it alight for his own enjoyment. Fish was finally arrested, and he immediately began confessing to killing 700 children. Get out of here. Yes, and he was, he was dizzyingly happy about it. Smiled as he described the grisly details of the tortures and the murders, appearing to the detectives, and one of the detectives said he appeared as the devil himself. I mean, uh, this Albert, the, I mean, this guy was a real jerk. <laughs> <laughs> And she says, let's go have sex. Lovely. Best possible outcome. Yeah. So I say, fine, fine and dandy. <laughs> now, I'm living with a girl, though. So I say, uh, ah, well, I can't do I'll that. there. So what about you? Oh, she's living with a guy. Oh. And it doesn't matter what color he is, but... <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. <laughs> but it was a frightening color. Really? It's a <laughs> color with connotations to you, a man that grew up in rural Canada. Exactly. And had never seen that color. What was he? On a, on a, on a, on a, a jagged purple man. He a zebra creature. He was an Indian. <laughs> well, they're very peaceful folk. I mean, prejudicially. This yeah, is if they're not holding Indian. a tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just talking earlier. You, you've learned to ignore the detractors. And the oh, yeah, because I'm, I'm reading things out of here. Because right it's... It's hard, like like Norm and I were talking. I I just started doing this as, as a favor to him, and and just because it's fun, you know. Right. But um, you know, I hear people say, "Oh, you should see what these people are reading about, writing about you." And right. we, uh, a couple uh, a couple episodes ago, what was oh, it? Oh, the, the first Green episode, one? yeah. The Tom Green one. We came back, and he's like, "Well, let's just address it." And so what we did is we, Norm, uh, he looked at a couple of the. Uh, the comments. He gathered a bunch of comments from yeah. uh, the people on YouTube, and they, they said some pretty hurtful things. Well, first of all, here's what I would say. My yeah. advice to you, uh, uh, think about what douchebags get to do. <laughs> <laughs> think about how, you know what I mean? I do. I would I embrace do. it. I would embrace the whole douchebag thing, because that seemed to be the term that kept popping yeah. up. And I would just go with it. I mean, if you're going to be a douchebag, be the best douchebag you can be. <laughs> the best douchebag I can be. The more I think about it, the more I love chicken. A great, great meat. If Timothy McVeigh is guilty of this terrible Oklahoma City bombing, then they should put that guy in jail for a long, long time. <laughs> you did a great meat. It was all that. I loved your... How'd you, you come out with that? That's... When you parodied me, <laughs> I think you were the best. Oh. Amanda Bynes is a lush blonde who's quickly turning into a blonde lush. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of this, where people make up porn star yeah. names? Like they, they take their childhood pet's name, and then they combine it with the street name. So anyways, mine would be Dick Fuckington. <laughs> <laughs> I, lived, I, lived on, I lived on Fuckington Crescent. <laughs> Oh, how about this? College freshman Scott Damaro, Larry, set a new world record by using his head to bust 142 eggs, and he now officially holds a place in the Guinness Book of fucking retards. <laughs> <laughs> like, there you go. I, like, I'm a Christian, right? I, don't I didn't like know that. Are you a Christian? Yes. Do you go to, do you watch the gladiators and things like that? What the fuck does that mean? Christians. No, I just go to fucking military funerals and go, fucking faggots! 
No, no, no. <laughs> no, I. You haven't changed one bit, no. <laughs> no, listen, you really haven't. No, listen, Kevin. <laughs> How much fun was it just hanging out at, at uh, first and, and I the writers' thing? It was fun, but let me say so uh, they don't yeah, think I remember yeah. the Westboro <laughs> Baptist. <yeah. laughs> I met you first. You'll never remember this because I was I just hanging it. out. Where did we meet? Crazy right? girls. <laughs> Crazy girls, talk about truth and advertising in that fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow is National Secretary's Day. Which is true. Is that right? I plan on getting my secretary the same thing I always do, a big fat goosing. <laughs> ah. Remember the good old days back when MILF stood for mentally ill ladies I'd like to fuck? <laughs> I'm not because what about this? If you say Asian... Right. right. Then that's everybody from that entire continent. It's more specific. To Meanwhile, Chinese hate Japanese. Well, I mean, you're now one. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, mean, they raped their Nan King. I, I, yeah. I mean, we, I, I didn't see it, but oh, I yeah. heard about it. You don't forget that <laughs> somebody rapes your Nan King. Why isn't that in USA Today? I... Yeah, it's in USA Today. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's in USA Today? No, we're back with Simon Helbert. <laughs> oh, listen to this. Catherine Zeta-Jones admitted she is bipolar half the time. She's deliriously happy. And the other time, she has to suck an old man's cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's dirty. Come on, man. Let's be... <laughs> A new study found that men with beards are more attractive than men without beards. More great work from the University of Bob Seger. <laughs> I knew this guy wrote for uh, Three's Company. <laughs> and he said, like, you know, they'd always have beautiful girls. Remember that show? Yeah, I love Three's Company. So they'd have extras, you know, and they were all, they were, so they'd call them the bimbo of the week, and they'd take them out to the smokehouse. But, but John Ritter, he, he wasn't like a Lothario or anything, but you know who was? Furley? Mr. Furley. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Of course. Mr. Furley. So he says his big line would be, he'd say to girls, he'd go, he'd go, uh, he'd go like this, Jesus. he'd go, I'm married, but it's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And then he'd put booze in when they weren't looking, like comically, when they looked, weren't looking away, he'd put booze into oh their booze. Oh my gosh. And then, but he'd go, be to, he'd go to a hotel in Burbank and, and, and have sex with them. And then one time oh. a hotel owner asked, he had a big eight by 10 he wanted him to sign, so Don Knotts had to go to another hotel. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not going well. Not going well. <laughs> I'm, I'm told by uh, Nick Swartzen that he's, he's come up with a new impression for his act, known for his impressions. Uh, what is it again? This is uh, Mr. Furley talking to the 20-year-old girl he just woke up next to. Or no, he's in the middle of sex with her. Uh -huh. I'm coming in your butt! <laughs> Oh my God! But listen, man. Hey, <laughs> your mouth is my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most popular documentaries on Netflix is Jiro. Jiro dreams of sushi. Jiro dreams of sushi. I've seen that. That's very good. That's you a have? fantastic yeah. documentary. One of the least popular documentaries. Jiro nightmares. <laughs> Jiro nightmares of Asperger. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm, I just thought I have a good show. Ah. Uh. Fucking with the star. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear my dad's yeah. favorite joke? Yeah. He says uh, uh, he was from the farm, you know, and he says uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a guy uh, a guy comes from the city. Oh. A city slicker comes and he <laughs> buys a, uh, a farm, and the farmer next door comes over to him and says, "Hey, now, uh, would you like to come over to my house tonight? We're going to have a, a big shindig for you uh, because you know we're neighborly here." And the city guy says, "Well, this is something that's." I really like, you know, that this is why I moved to the farm to have things like this, you know. Guy says it'll be a hell of a big party, you know. He goes, it'll be, you know, a little a little uh, drinking, a little fighting, a little fucking, you know. And the guy, city guy goes, well, that sounds good. What time should I be here? And the, and the farmer goes, anytime you like, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so they would drink, then get in a fight, <laughs> and fuck. <laughs> Accomplished comedian. <laughs> what is accomplished? Did you write this one? This is not against. Accomplished. <laughs> this is not against anybody. <laughs> uh, accomplished. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Accomplished comedian Sinbad. Has a <laughs> He's accomplished. Well, yeah, you're right. He's he is. Accomplished. It's like Byron Allen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Accomplished comedian Sinbad has announced he's filing for bankruptcy, bankruptcy for the second time. The second time. 
<laughs> oh God, it's so retarded. Sounds like things have gone from sin bad to sin worse. <laughs> Jimmy Brogan yes. will not swear. He won't curse. Yeah. So one time I saw him at the, uh, at the fucking Laugh Factory. Yeah. And he was like, hello, everybody. How are you doing? So some guy's like, fuck you, Brogan. So you suck my cock. He's like, very nice, sir. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, nice way to talk. Yeah, you talking <laughs> to your mother? Yeah, fuck you. I'll fuck you in the ass. <laughs> oh, very good, sir. Yes. Well, uh, I suppose you went to uh, Ivy League, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Barry yeah, Levinson was same. making this, and yeah. I have no idea. He was the making fuck. the TV show. Yes, he's a big deal. He was. Yes. Was he then or no? Yeah, yeah. He had already done Diner. Diner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank diner. you. So that's who. I like how he adds to it. I said he did Diner. Diner. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, yeah. yeah. I actually like, like Diner. It's, it's a good movie. It's like working Ooh, with Paul Reiser was in that as like well. It's like Dustin Hoffman and Rain Man. Yeah, Diner. <laughs> diner. Yeah, he worked on Diner. He worked on Diner. Uh, <laughs> you know where this guy started? He used I give to, up. He used to work under the, the uh, Queensborough Bridge. George Washington. Bridge. Oh, yes. no, I named the wrong bridge. No, Queensborough Bridge, and he, uh, he'd jerk off punks for $15 a man. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, was that a, a, a strategy you had? No, I lucked into it all. I kept, I, kept, I did my Billy and my Happy. And then my wedding singer, and then I just started randomly going, all right, what else we got? Yeah. I had a little strategy going for a while, and then I started going, come on, let's go, let's yeah. shoot. What do we got? <clears throat> I, I, can't, I never could do them perfect. Spade's good at that. So definitely yeah. Hanna Barbera. Oh, yeah, those were the best. I, I can do Scooby's Laugh pretty good. Oh. You guys want to hear it? Sure, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good. Thank you. It's pretty damn good. Thanks a lot. I like the uh, Snagglepuss. Snagglepuss was good. Yeah, yeah. I like the variety. Yeah, yeah. What happens to Murgatroyd? Yeah, he was it's a little. Uh, Adam <laughs> Egan gets involved. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Foster Brooks? Yeah, the best. <laughs> he was great because he was on those those uh, roast. The roast. roast. Yeah. But Dean Martin was the host, a huge drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kept saying, you're stepping on me. <laughs> Throwing it down, That's Dean. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dean Martin go, our next guest. One time they had, <laughs> one time they had Mickey Mantle. He goes, our next guest, Mickey Mantle. <laughs> what, now I was in the big leagues, as a matter of fact. And he would just, like, dribble off, you know? He just, he'd go, our next guest. I'm not always in the big leagues. <laughs> Minor, ladies and gentlemen, umpire Foster Brooks. And then he'd come out with a thing. But I saw him one time, he completely bailed on a joke. He said, oh, Foster Brooks? Uh, oh, Dino. Uh, Dino. Yeah. He said, uh, our next guest, it was, uh, Sammy was the next guest. He goes, our next guest, I don't want to say he has a lot of gold, jewelry, but last time, Mr. Sammy Davis. <laughs> <laughs> You know a funny story about you gambling is? No. Do you want me to tell it? I don't know what it is. At SNL, when they give you the limo to go to the party, you'd go to Atlantic City. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Norm's like, where is he? <laughs> and then, uh... Because the driver would always be, be like, I'm paid for this? So you'd have to sit outside of Trump for two days. <laughs> <laughs> you go, yeah, the party's at Trump. <laughs> and so, uh, that's not even the funny part. The funny part is you go, I have 15 grand, I'm up, it's in my fridge and ships, and I'm nervous. Yeah, I and I go, so great. Much money. Then the next week you go, I go, did you go back? You go, <laughs> I, I'm at 90. I go, I have a lot, fucking grand? I have a lot of chips in my fridge. Go, just buy a Porsche 911, you'll have something. <laughs> and you go, no, 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 it's not how you do it. <laughs> next week, I'm at 75. I go, shit, the next week is, I'm at 10. <laughs> it's the fucking most predictable that. story. Yeah, and you're all at the chips in your fridge, you said. I don't know what to do with them. I'm scared. Yeah, because you can, only cash, in, you can only cash in 10,000 at a time. Or do you you, they report it over yeah, 10 or something? They report it over 10. They've always done that. It's, I know. They should raise it. But, you know, you also can't take more than 10,000 on an airplane with you for some reason. It's time for this week's This Week I Learned. Adam? <laughs> This is a thing we do. This week I learned. Uh, this week I learned that cum tastes like nickels. Uh oh. <laughs> this week? Is that true? Yes. When somebody asked me about you, I said, I always remember you as the man with the perfect perpetual smile. Oh. You are a smiling person, and it's true. That's not good it? for oh, comedy, is it? No, it's b wonderful. It's it is? Wonderful, oh, yeah. Because We're I'm... here to have fun. Why does some comedy the Dick Van Dyke Show, hold up for generations uh -huh. and others do not. 
That's a good question. I have a good answer for that. I really do. You want me to answer yes, it now? Yes, of course, yes. When we did that show, I knew we had something very special. I said, this is classic. I told the writers, I said, this is a classic show. It's going to go on way past us. And I said, so I want no slang in this show. Because a guy came in with a McMinnville and, you know, from uh -huh. the story about the same uh -huh. name. Uh -huh. I said, no slang. I said, a gun is not a, a gun. It's not a gat or a rod. Uh -huh. It's a gun. I said, if we knew no slang, this show will last a longer time. Well, that's interesting. And oh. I was assiduous about that, and I, I and, knew. Uh, no, you didn't know who the president was? I knew we was. had something you special. Didn't know, you didn't know the governor or the president or anything like that? No. Yeah. We didn't, and we, didn't, and we stayed out of that, too. We stayed. Because look at Murphy Brown. Can't be, uh, can't be showing anymore. Is that right? Well, because every second joke's about Ed Meese. Oh. <laughs> or Dan Quayle. Yes. I mean, this is what you never hear. Uh, he made love to me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> the guy goes, guy goes, you got to do rag. He goes, you know, I'm fucking my woman, you know, and I don't want to answer the phone. Oh, shit, it could be a job, and, you know. And then, <laughs> well, and, 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 you know, you, after you, you take the do-rag, you wipe off your dick with the do-rag. And I'm like, no, I don't do that. But everyone in the audience is like, yeah, we all do that. <laughs> you told us a fascinating uh, little a, a tidbit of trivia that uh, about the origins of the of the expression "break a leg." Mm -hmm. Share that. Should with we recount it? Oh, well, yeah. it's from uh, Shakespeare's time. Shakespeare, and at that time, what we were talking about in Shakespeare, he often recaps and recounts the plot at the top of an act. That's because crowds would come in and out; they'd they'd leave, mm -hmm. come and go. So you want to catch them up, mm -hmm. and then oftentimes crowds would just not stay for the end of the play, or they might stop it in progress. Not Shakespeare's necessarily, but plays of that time. People would, you know, show their uh, uh, distaste for a play. And yes. They'd stop the play or whatever. So, to Boo! Bring, yes. Too many witches! And they can't go on, exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, they'd say break a leg because that means if you break a leg, you're bowing. You're only moving Stand your leg back. Show the, uh, okay. show the so crowd, at, uh, the you folks at home. Break a leg, right? Yes. Take a bow. You break a leg to take a bow, and so that uh, basically goes. I hope you get to the end of the play. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So break a leg. It's a, it's a it's a piece of trivia that's actually interesting. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's true. Yeah. You meet uh, at some point in your life, Ricky Gervais. Mm -hmm. When does this happen? At a radio station a radio in station. England. Yes, in about 1998. And you're both wags. And yes. You both work on the uh, on the air? Behind the scenes. Oh, behind the scenes. Yes. Oh. As uh, he was the head of speech, uh -huh. and I was, he immediately decided he needed an assistant when he got the job, and I happened to send my resume in, and uh, he gave me the job. Wow. And we became, head I became assistant head of speech. Do you know what that means? No. It was a made up, it was a made up position. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't a real job. So um, that's like the civil service. Is the BBC owned by This the wasn't the BBC. This was, no. uh, this was just a local radio station that oh, just see, launched that played uh, uh -huh. alternative music, uh -huh. kind of like a KCRW. Right, right, right. And um, yeah, we were sort of backroom boys, and then um, we had an email one day from the boss that said, uh, I remember quite distinctly, I'm paraphrasing, but it said, but it said something like, "What am I paying you cunts for?" <laughs> I'm not paraphrasing this. The, it did say cunts, and so we panicked, and yeah. then we rushed onto the air and kind of did this segment, kind of jokey segment, uh -huh. um, and then we got an email saying that was the funniest thing I've ever heard. And then basically, that was our relationship with the boss. It would be, oh, that was a piece of shit, yeah, anywhere yeah. like that, and you're fired. Yeah. That was hilarious, you're geniuses, and it oh, would be very wow. much like that. So this, is, this explains a lot. So you start, you're, you're the guy's fucking assistant. Right. So that never goes away. Right, yeah, yeah. there we are. Can I ask you a serious question? Because yes. I, you know, admire you greatly as a stand-up comedian. Yeah. How do you work your stand-up comedy? Do you do you go up there and just ad lib until something makes sense, like you've just said, like, until something hits? I don't mean this. I'm not being facetious. Oh, I'm you genuinely mean, you intrigued. actually really want to? Or do know? you work it out before? I'm always, I'm always. Intrigued. I have like one, I have a fantastic punchline. Oh, you think of a punchline as it were, yeah, and then I you think can of work a to great, it. Great, great punchline, and then I just wander around because I used to do it by rote. You know, like I would uh, that fellow there uh, booked me on Letterman. And uh, then you had to do five minutes, so they had to be word for word. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not a good enough comic actor to pretend it's my first time saying it. So instead, right. I just uh, started yapping, and then I would think, you know, out of like desperation, you're funny, kind of, you know what I mean? Right. Because you're, uh, people are looking at you. Yeah, 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 sure. And then you just, so you just think of little jokes, knowing the giant joke is coming. Mm -hmm. 
But or, you've already worked out. Yeah, that's okay. there. Okay, that's, you know right. I mean? that's in the can. I'm just circling it. I had to try to do Pardo once when he was too sick to do it. Oh, they yeah. brought me in to do the opening, and I had to do it, and it sounded like young Pardo, and it was so mm. hard to do. And one time, I remember, the, I had recorded this VO that opened the show before. The, the very first thing in the show was like a long crawl with oh, like yeah. a 19, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then Jenna, our stage manager, runs over and is like, the tape's not working, you gotta go do it live. And we're live in like one minute. Oh, shit. So she shoves me into that That's booth. booth. That scary booth. Scary booth. And you put those headphones on, and you hear everything that's going on. Yeah. Carry three, go, all right, everybody. It's just madness oh, going on. All right, everybody, here we go. Okay, one minute, one minute. And yeah. like, how do they hire people that have no poker face? Yeah. They're like, one minute, one minute. And you're just like, geez, this is your job for years. You think you'd be like, hey, guys, one minute, we're fine. But it was like, guys. Nah! And I'm like, this is awful. Live, we're going live. And uh, I'm sitting there, like, freaked out. And the right, it was Seth Meyers and he came with a script, hands it to me, slams it, you know, and I'm like, and I'm like shaking, and there's no video. Oh, it's You're awful, and Jenna's like, there's no video, just, I point to you, just start talking. So she points me, and I read the thing again, I trip over a couple words, it's a long thing, it was like three pages, and I trip over some, ah, you know, I'm doing it, and I finish. Oh. And I sit down, and Pardo is in the booth with me the whole time. And I sat on his lap, and he goes, he goes, hey, get off of me! <laughs> Don, I'm sorry. And then he went, it's Saturday Night Live. Do you watch your own show? No, sir. Well, you have. Uh, I've talked to people. I've watched it, and I've talked to other people who find it uh, compelling. Uh, you, you can't take your eyes off. So well, there, you, imagine if whatever you were doing it is it. you're making up, whatever qualities you're uh, <laughs> but imagine, fabricating here, you yourself possess them. But imagine if you were doing it. And you well, imagine if you eyes. were doing it. Well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the matter? I've done it for 30 years. I don't want to do it anymore. You do Without it. Without an audience, though. You could do it. But you, you'd be a different show. I don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. No, I've done it. People always say to me, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I kind of did it right. for 30 plus years. Right. Uh, and you... Uh, we always worry a little about you because we regard you as the top of the heap, the best of the best, the funniest of the funny, uh, the guy who has it in every fiber of his being, not, not conjured. Uh, it's well, the real thing. So you do it. I just want to write. I just want to write books. I know one thing, Mike. I you know that. I can, you know. I know that there's a God. I don't know his nature. You know, I can't be I can't be expected to know his nature, but I know from life there is a God. Really, tell me. Because I uh, I've I've seen in life that uh, people often are uh, they get salvation, and that's what uh, teaches me that there's a God. No, it teaches me that there's a God. No, what teaches Mike Tyson that there's a God? Just that I'm existing. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, just that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes the most successful people in the world are uh, kind of they're like self sabotages. Right. You know, sometimes they're, they're scared of success. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you can self sabotage. Did you self sabotage with Buster time. Douglas? Lots of time, but that was just a rare one. But Bust, I was I self sabotage and I still won. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody has their ups and downs. Oh, yeah. When I used to, when I used to, fight, when I used to fight, I used to have, like, always have sex and catch these fucking dripping. I'll be dripping like a good human in July, and I'm scared to go because I'm thinking I got AIDS. I can't take the AIDS test. I'm saying, I ain't taking that fucking test. And then the guy, and listen, sometimes I say, all right, Chan, you don't got to take it. I ain't, listen. He made a terrible mistake. He took the AIDS listen. test, and he crammed the night nah, before. Nah. <laughs> I don't know if you know Jimmy Schubert. You sure, know Jimmy, right? Sure. Yeah. This is the greatest thing anyone's ever done for me. I was, I had moved up from San Diego. Uh -huh. Polly's like, come, move up. And then I had no place to live. Uh -huh. So I slept in my truck for like three nights. And I slept at the parking lot oh, at the comedy uh -huh. store. Oh, and I had uh -huh. no money and I was broke. Both? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I, I was it. blacklisted from the show. I'll say it, it's oh, an that's exclusive right. here. I forgot. Exclusive. Just because of the, Carcinio. Carcinio. Well, he oh, no, Carcinio. he liked Carcinio. Oh, he did. They're making fun of a 
are she knew and, and us. I mean, oh, they're making fun of him as much as they are of us. <laughs> but toward the end, Leno told me last time I ran into Leno, he goes, Johnny was walking down the hall and just go, yelling out, they're making fun of me now, it's time to go. Because I did one, there was one that I didn't really want to do and I didn't write that was a little mean that made him kind of senile. Uh, yes. And that went on and that, that was one. that was the one. The one where he didn't, he didn't know, know stuff. If, he didn't know if Ed. Susan Day, he didn't know the Partridge family was off the air. And where, I mean, Ed, where Ed would go old reference last on Younger Yes, yeah. yeah. And then they had Chris Rock play Arsenio and you know, it was kind of like, so your ratings have gone up and ours have gone down? Uh, I didn't know that. You know, so that, and then I couldn't get on the show and I felt bad about it. Other one. Like Warren Michaels with you invented that impression. Um, <laughs> well, I, no one was doing it when I got there. Yeah. Well, um, the, later. Everybody got later, it. Later, Mike yeah. Myers made a right. fortune yeah. from you. Yeah, he did a great, <laughs> yeah. great uh, Lauren, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we all influence each other. Yeah. <laughs> Once it's out there, it's out there. Um, it, it's fine. You know, it's, it's you know, um, Wayne's World, you know, I'm still getting checks. <laughs> no, Mike and I are good. Have you ever done my, my uh, impression of a 60-year-old man having sex with a 19-year-old? A 60-year-old Six man. 60. He's 60. And he's having with, sex with a 19-year-old woman. Year old woman. This is it. You're 19. <laughs> You're 19. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Jim Downey once, uh, <laughs> they were going to do a game show, and the, the studio audience was going to be, was going to play the studio mm -hmm. audience, you know, and, and uh, uh, Downey said, no, no, that you cannot do that, like a, a, a person cannot um, both be in the sketch and be watching the sketch at the same time unless you're Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> but then when Sandler did it, I was just envious. I thought it's a great because oh, like so he's just his, his joy was. Yeah. I mean, he just bounced off the screen. Yeah, yeah. And he he took a while to catch on there. I mean, people were saying, "Is he going to make it?" And I remember one night I was outside my dressing room. I was in like nine things, you know, top yeah. of the mark. And Sandler yeah. was kind of in the hallway, and he was sort of emotional. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know, Carvey. So I remember bringing him in. I was glad I was nice to him. It's kind of hard. I said, you'll be bigger than all of us. Did you <laughs> think that? I did. Because I, mean, I, I saw the way see, girls see, reacted oh, to yeah, him. Oh, yeah, girls react to him like crazy. And he was but, you know, you, who knows his how his career would have gone? Because isn't that mixed nuts? Like, you know, where oh, he, 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 took he just control. played that, how about, ooh, you know, right. and then he took control. Well, yeah. Sandler knew. He just he just kept it bait. He goes, Carvey, they, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to make it funny. You know, like it was like, you got to do it yourself. What about this? Were you ever, when you, you served time in prison, didn't you? Good, bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> you almost, wow, almost, almost got, got out of here with that. Yes, I did. What about it? For something about 650 grams of cocaine you were found with or something? Jesus, yes. <laughs> I, that sounds like enough to kill a Wow. Woman. Did you ever hear, I was wondering about this, like in prison, did you ever hear somebody's, like, I don't know, maybe you just heard somebody at some point go, uh, hey, that Mr. Candyman. What the fuck? <laughs> that was a long way to hey go there, for that. Hey, Mr. Kenneman. No, man. How no, about no. I have some of that cocaine? <laughs> like, were you expected, in other words, to get cocaine? No, for I was not. I was not expected to do that. And <laughs> I'm really happy that you brought that up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it was good. It was really good. Hey, Mr. Kenneman. Yeah, hey, no, hey, hey, Mr. Kenneman. <laughs> that never actually... But did they call you Ken? No. <laughs> you just learned to pick soap up with your feet. That's all, right. all that I learned. <laughs> Why don't you bring me a big rock cat mountain? <laughs> yeah. You got friends. Yeah. You got friends. Yeah. You got friends on outside come in. Whew. Well, you do feel better. <laughs> wow. We weren't supposed to mention that. We're not. We're not. Of course not. We're not mentioning. Has, has anyone explained why I'm sitting here? No, it's oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> he did. It was well, a top I, ten. He didn't want to bring it up. Hey, Mr. Or, Candy Man, my nose is empty. <laughs> was so, that really your nickname? Yeah, Candy Man, that was it. No, it wasn't Candy Man. This is Mr. Candy Man over here. <laughs> <laughs> he got a lot of ideas, but he ain't got a lot of coke. <laughs> Wait, you wait. weren't sentenced for uh, 650 grams of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I went green. So I just want to say yes, that I think this is the greatest show on television. Oh, uh, listen to Jim. <laughs> this is amazing. amazing. Honest to God. Because we don't need frills any longer. 
right? right? No, I don't think we Fuck do. Fuck the frills. <laughs> right? Well, let's just get to the point. Yeah, yeah. It's just people making sound. <laughs> that is right. a That's all it is. It's a nightlight, you know? It's, uh -huh. it's something like they entertain you, and at the same time, like, I can sit, when, first of all, you are the man. You are my comedy choice. Whenever I'm looking <laughs> for something on YouTube or whatever it is, Norm's always my first comedy choice.